car is smoking and my tires are popped already. Damn, these guys are serious business. I think I'm gonna have to do a car swap. Oh my! Uh... I don't want to be Mr. Views. I need banana, tasty banana. Put banana in my mouth. Squeeze the peel, it comes in. Then <laughs> squeeze banana. Oh shit. Hello, everybody. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the pre-stream podcast. Today is Friday. Friday, Friday. Everyone party on a Friday. Welcome. It is episode 16, I believe. I, I say I believe because every day I just guess. I don't actually take the extra time or initiative to do any research on my own show. I just guess. So I think today is episode 16 of the pre-stream podcast. It very well could be like the 40th episode, but I just don't bother with it. I just guess and, you know, I shoot from the hip, which is very ineffective. You waste a lot of ammo that way, but it's how I've been doing stuff for my whole life. Um, You know, you got to be careful around this time of year, you know, some of them, you know, a little bit too extra, too much, a little bit extra holiday festive fun, if you know what I mean, as they're out there doing their thing. If you work in retail, if you work in the restaurant industry, if you work in the service industry. Just so you guys know, the poll went live last night right before my late stream. So it was around 14 or so hours ago. As of this morning, over 1,000 people have already voted. Wow. What the shit? <clears throat> now, the other side of this equation is that it was not just the common viewers who had nominated games. It was also channel members, people who are actually members of this channel who support this channel every month with their subscription okay and i appreciate that guys thank you to everyone who's a member of the channel thank you very much everyone so far today for your overwhelmingly positive support i really do appreciate it remember we do have a goal for this month we're trying to reach we're way far away from it but maybe we'll see a rallying this christmas week of people becoming members which would be great if we did uh to make that retrospective marathon event happen in january okay just throwing that out there <clears throat> I'm trying to make a push to finish Lost Judgment, which we've been playing for three effing months, right? We're in the midst of Halo Infinite. Usually at the end of the year, you don't get any high-profile games. We've got Halo Infinite that we're playing right now. And at the same time, all that's going on, there's all these other games that people have wanted me to kind of jump into recently that I just haven't had a chance to. So you see what I'm saying? Like, essentially, 
this game normally would be, oh, here's a game to fill dead time at the end of the year because there's nothing going on. This year, there's really no dead time to fill. It's actually, when we played Forza Horizon 5, it was delaying other stuff you guys wanted to see. So I kind of felt like it was almost like the red-headed stepchild of the games that I was playing right now. It was like, ah, oh, oh, we're playing this again? Oh, man, well... And the truth is, the support for the game was not great. What I was doing was a special thing where whoever was the top tipper of every night that I played it would get to pick the car that I would drive the next week. Some weeks, the person would be the top tipper of like a $10 tip and wouldn't even pick a car. They're like, screw, I don't care. <laughs> wow. Last night, the finale of Forza Horizon 5 was good. I raised $9. $9 on the stream. Yes, the finale of a playthrough got $9. I don't think anyone really cared about Forza 5 at this point. So anyway, um, it was a good game. Likely you're going to hear about it in my Game of the Year Awards because it's such a good game. But at the same time, I get it. Um, it is what it is. Uh, it's over. The twist this week is that I'm going to be using a new controller. A new... <laughs> a new controller during my Friday Night Fights session. Oh my god, the, it's reflecting the street in your face. Here, let me aim it up so it doesn't reflect the street in your face. A new controller. This is the Hori fighting game no the hori fighting stick alpha designed exclusively for the xbox series x okay so here's the deal there's a little bit of a story behind this we've been playing the street fighter 30th anniversary collection on the playstation 4 and then playstation 5 for the last year ever since it came out in early 27 uh, 2018 so about three and a half almost four years we've been playing this collection i play it every week once a week we play old school street fighter it's a good time what the fuck i didn't jump dude this is fucking terrible dude the reason i like doing that is because it gives me nostalgia it makes me feel like it's back in the day when i used to go to uh arcades every friday night and play against the local competition you know that old school vibe where am i playing you still haven't told me <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! I treat you like you're yeah. Want me to run your fucking tournament for you? And I love doing it. I'm very good at the older Street Fighter games. Probably the only games I'm actually good at. Um, and you guys really seem to enjoy me going back and playing that every week, okay? Now, over the years, the collection has gotten worse and worse. The connections get worse. There's less people playing it. And sadly, there's a group of trolls who follow me around to troll the shit out of me and basically ruin the experience for everyone trying to play by finding glitches and bugs with the game that make it so that you can't even play online. Like, this, there's a guy, he'll go into a lobby I'm in on purpose, he'll stalk me, and then when it's his turn to play, he'll glitch the game and it completely craps out, and no one can advance, the whole lobby's crapped out. And you might say, well, why don't you just kick him from the lobby? Because you can't. Why don't you just block him so you don't have to play him again? Because you can't. The game is so unfinished, like literally unfinished, it doesn't have common features that other fighting games have to stop that kind of behavior. So once they're in that lobby, it's ruined for everyone, you have to find another lobby to play in. So every week, it's like, oh, it's time to play Street Fighter. Well, I could have played 50 matches, but instead I played 20, because half the time we were trying to fucking, you know, avoid these assholes. So just hypothetically, a couple weeks ago, I was talking on this very podcast, and I was like, you know, I wonder what would happen if we played it on the Xbox instead of the PlayStation uh, version of the game. <clears throat> Do you think that there'd be different players, like a different player base with different levels of competition? Do you think the trolls would still be there? Maybe we could avoid them, etc., etc. Surprisingly enough, okay, people were interested in seeing this, and someone donated the Xbox version of the 30th anniversary collection to me. Let's do shoutouts. So we start off with the YouTube side of things. Jack Barstow did a $5 super chat and asked, he says, I'm a newer fan. I was watching old videos. Whatever happened to your BMW? Was there something wrong with it? I thought they were reliable. Actually, in regards to my BMW, I, okay. I always had a piece of crap car for most of my life. A piece of garbage. When I first started out, I was driving my parents' beat up Ford Taurus from 1992. Then when I finally had enough money, to buy a car, I bought a 2002 Pontiac Grand Am that looked nice. It had nice looks to it. And it was a lemon. It was a piece of dog shit. The car had so many problems. Leaking, transmission fluid. I had to redo the transmission once, which was basically the entire cost of the car. The brakes kept going. It was a really crappy car. And I drove it everywhere. I drove it to Street Fighter tournaments all across the country. One time I drove all the way down from Connecticut, all the way down to like fucking Virginia and shit. Um, the car sucked, but... It was mine. 
right? So I had that car all the way until 2014. Now in 2014, excuse me, not 2014, 2012. I got confused there. In 2012, something interesting happened. I was making good money for the first time in my life. I was a full-time YouTuber back then whose channel was very hot. If you remember, back in 2014 when I put out gameplay videos, 2014 I keep saying, it's 2012. Back in 2012 when I put out gameplay videos, it didn't even matter what game it was. I would get tens of thousands of views on like the first 10 videos of any playthrough, which essentially would make me, no exaggeration, hundreds of thousands of dollars, every game I ever played. That's how profitable YouTube was back in the day, just with ad revenue. It was insane. So I was rolling in dough at that time. Not going to lie, I was. And because of that, I was like, why am I driving this piece of shit, Grand Am? It's falling apart. By, that, by then, it was almost a decade that I had owned the thing. And it was really falling apart. It was actually starting to leak oil everywhere. And the window was busted. It sucked into the door and wouldn't go up anymore. It was like getting stuck in shit. <laughs> and I was like, this car's on its last legs. This thing is just having so many issues. And at the time, I was like, I want a new car. Now, there's many things I could have done. I could have bought a car outright. I could have leased a car. I could have went to various different things. The tr here's the truth of the matter. I wanted a new car that I didn't want to have to do any work on it. Because that Grand Dam had been such a lemon to me. I had so many times I had to take it to the shop, have things redone from the ground up. I paid for that car, no exaggeration, probably three times. Since I bought it on repairs, I kept rebuying it, rebuying it with the cost of repairs. Okay? So finally, when 2012 hit, I wanted to get a car that, number one, was going to be ultra reliable. Number two was not going to cost me any money for maintenance. And number three, something that was just easy to do and get and, and not have to do a lot of work. So, I'm not kidding you. About five minutes away from where I lived in Connecticut was a BMW dealership. It was like right down the street, right around the corner. And one day I drove in there and I said, my car is a piece of dog shit. It's falling apart. In your lot, it's leaking. I need to get rid of this and I need a new car. And so they showed me all their models or whatever. And at that time, I didn't want to go crazy. I didn't want to get a high-end BMW because I didn't know anything about the cars actually. I really didn't. I just walked in saying, I need a car. Really stupid, right? Well, what can I do? I'm stupid, right? And by the way, I knew I wasn't going to buy a BMW. Too expensive, but I wanted the least one. I want to see if I, what if I get a BMW for a couple of years and I like it? And then I'll, maybe I'll buy it outright after that. Or, you know, keep the lease, extend the lease. I just want to try it out and see what it's like to have a car like this. I've never had a car like this before in my life, okay? <clears throat> so... I got like a low-end BMW. It certainly wasn't a high. It was like a lower-end model um, with base features and stuff. And I leased it for about two, two and a half years, I want to say. It wasn't three. It was like two or two and a half years. And over that time period, there were things I liked about the BMW, things I didn't. What I liked about it was it had the best brakes of any car I've ever driven. You could stop on a dime if you needed to. Okay? Um, and obviously, BMWs look nice. They have a nice leather interior and everything. It's a very nice car. A very nice looking car. But, it also had a bunch of stuff that I didn't need, like a built-in GPS into the dashboard. What the fuck do I need a screen installed in the, the front of my car for, right? A moonroof. What the fuck is a moonroof? Oh, man, let me tell you how many times in my life up to that point, I was just sitting in my car at night, and I was leaning back and saying, man, I just really wish I could stare at the moon right now. It would just enhance my car experience if I could stare at the moon. If I had a hole right here in my ceiling of my car, <laughs> you know, but anyway, the point I'm making is the BMW was a nice car, but it was very expensive. All right. And it had all these features I didn't need. Okay. The real reason that I wanted the BMW was because it has full maintenance. When you get, when you lease a BMW, everything with that car is covered. If you have an issue, oil needs to be changed. Oh, the car's having issues, the brakes or something. You just take it into the dealership. They deal with it free. Completely free. It's included in your lease payment. And then you get a loaner as well. So if the car ever broke down or had an issue, I get another car in the meantime, and then I get my car back. Okay? So that's why I did that. Okay? I did it for about two years, two and a half years. Then what happened was I still had about six months left on my lease, but I was leaving Connecticut. I was moving out here to Washington State. I personally didn't want the BMW anymore because after having it for two years, I liked the car, but I realized it was too expensive for what I was getting. I wasn't using the features in the car that were causing it to be expensive. Hell, I barely even drive. I fucking work from home all day, right? 
So I wanted to get rid of it. I, I, my intention was to trade in the car early and get a different car when I moved out here. When I went there, I was shocked. They said, oh, well, the only way to get out of your lease is to pay the whole thing. Huh? Yeah, you have six months left on your lease. So if you just want to trade the car in early, pay us for the whole six months, but give us the car now. And I was like, that doesn't sound like it's beneficial to me. That sounds like I'm getting ripped off. So they said, oh, we'll cut you a deal. Get a new lease on a new BMW. Okay, new car for another three years. <laughs> and what we will do is we will waive all of your six months of remaining lease on the previous BMW. And you'll have a new BMW for the next three years. Probably one of the worst decisions I made, but I made it because I was like, I don't, I don't, I just didn't, at that point I was spending so much money to move. I didn't have a ridiculous amount of money to now drop to pay off the lease. So I was like, I guess it just makes sense to do this. I don't want to get into the details because it was a big rigmarole. There was all this drama to get the car out here. When it got out here, the, the, the fucking plates were screwed up. I didn't want to get into it. But I was stuck with a BMW for three effing years while I lived out here. Did I use any of the features of it? No. By the way, during those three years, a lot of things changed. This was the YouTube apocalypse. My channel fell out of prominence on YouTube. I started making way less money. I couldn't afford the goddamn thing anymore. It was so expensive. I was paying so much money a month for a car where I wasn't using the features that made it expensive. Okay? So it's finally, <clears throat> when that lease ran out, which was, I believe, I want to say it was like April of 2017, something like that. Yeah, I drove to Seattle, which was the closest BMW dealership. Want to talk about a difference? When I lived in Connecticut, the BMW dealership was down the street, five minutes away. Here, where I live in Washington, it's like an hour away. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> so I finally drove all the way down to fucking downtown Seattle, and I said, take this fucking car away. I don't want it. Take it. And I tossed it at them, and they caught it. Like five guys came out, and they were very burly guys. They caught the car. And I got rid of it, and I ended up getting a much more reasonable you know, mid-range mid, mid car, not a low-end, not a high. I mean, mid-range, reasonable, compact car. It makes a lot more sense. It doesn't have any of these ridiculous, gratuitous features. Uh, I'm currently paying it off. I'll own it within another, I think, two years, one year. I don't even know. I'm not paying any attention to it. I'll own it soon. Um, and I like the car a lot. I have no complaints. And so I haven't had a BMW now. Almost five years. It's that far in the past. So if you're watching old videos, you see me talk about a BMW, that's like five years ago. Okay, hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Kevin Bernstein did a super chat. He says, leasing for is for chumps. Buy it or don't if you can. Here's, <clears throat> I do feel that there's a benefit. Excuse me. Excuse me. I do. Excuse me. Like a baby. To smash my chest and burp. I do feel there's a benefit to leasing if you're someone who is in a situation, for example, my situation, where I didn't know how much income I was going to be making or whatever. For example, when I first got that BMW, what if, wait, what if I decided to buy it? The payments would have been much higher, by the way, if I had bought it versus leasing it. And what if I committed to a payment that at that time I could afford, but what if in two, three years, all of a sudden I'm making way less money on YouTube and how do I afford it? Because I locked into that payment. I can't afford it anymore. And that's actually exactly what happened is the first BMW lease that I did was about two years and I could afford it the whole time. Then I got into a new three-year lease and a year into it, I couldn't afford it anymore. But I was, you know, basically paying as little as I possibly can, nickel and diamond to, to pay it off. So I'm not sitting here on a pile of money. Oh, what can I blow it on today? No, I'm nickel and diming my way through life right now. I really am. Imagine if, I had not leased it, but I bought it and was locked into a like even higher, higher payment. And now I'm screwed, right? Now I repossessed the car and shit. That would not have been good. So I feel like if you're in a situation where right now you can afford something, but you don't know long term how your life's going to go, leasing makes sense. I also feel that leasing makes sense um, if you're the kind of person who, I'll be honest, makes a lot of money and doesn't want to be stuck with a car for a long term. What if you just like having new cars? Because you have a lot of money to blow, right? So lease a car and every two years trade and get a new car, right? Yeah. That's not me though. <laughs> That's definitely not me. The car I'm driving right now, I'll be driving till it blows up. I mean that too. Like the car I have now, I've been driving it since early 2017. 
So almost, we're almost at a five-year mark. I'll probably be driving the car until it explodes. Hopefully I won't be in it when it explodes. How many members do we have this morning? Did we get any new members? How are we looking at the member count? We'll be very excited if the member count went up this morning. So we started 314, and we got a bunch of people who either re-upped their membership or became a new members, and we are currently at 315. So we went up one. Just so you guys know. Yeah, just so you guys know. Um, the highest we ever had was 334. So we got a ways to go to get back and retie the highest we've ever had. But thank you, at least for the new membership. Thank <laughs> you.